Welcome to Networking Rx, a podcast devoted to helping business professionals like you enhance your networking skills in order to become more proficient giving and receiving quality business referrals and improving the overall quality of your life and the lives of those around you. The Networking Rx podcast is a production of AmSpirit Business Connections, an organization whose mission is to empower business success through networking. Welcome back for another episode. This is the Networking Rx podcast. I am your host. This is Frank Egan, founder and president of AmSpirit Business Connections. If you were with me uh, last episode, I talked about Oregon Daisy Chains. And in that, I, if you get a chance, go ahead and, and review that episode. It just came out uh, two days ago. Um, I talked about you know how the whole organ donation thing is the, the evolution of it. You know, it just started with somebody donating uh, a kidney, and, and now it's kind of evolved into, um, well, the, the, the original donation was between twins, and, and a lot of donations through the years of, of various organs have come about because somebody has perished in an accident, and we're getting to a point now where people are donating organs, donating kidneys mainly, because everybody's got an extra extra one. Most people have an extra one, I should say. Um it's just out of the goodness of their heart to total strangers. So I have on the program with me today, Rebecca Hampton. And Rebecca um, is, she's a giver. Um, and she donated a kidney basically to a total stranger. Um, and there's more to the story. And I really want to kind of get that story out because just to say, hey, yes, somebody donated a kidney to a stranger doesn't, doesn't do justice to how it all works. And there's just more to it than that. So Rebecca, thank you for being here. Thanks, Frank. Glad to be here. So I guess let's just sort of start in the beginning. Um, you know, what prompted this? I mean, is, did you lose a card game? Was it a bet or something like that? <laughs> um, no, but just probably as silly, um, I saw a Facebook post. It was social media. Okay. It was a post that, um, well, it my recipient ultimately was Mike and it was his wife Phyllis who was an acquaintance of mine um, through work so we were friends on Facebook and only saw each other in person about one time a year so um, I just happened to see her post um, requesting you know people to get tested to see if they could be a donor and so that just prompted you to do it it's just like what the heck or it, it was I mean at first I just reposted her post um, you okay. know to all my my contacts to see if anybody would be interested. And then something inside of me just said, Hey, maybe you need to be the one to get tested and see if you can do this. Um, so I originally thought, well, I'll, you know, do a good deed. I'll get tested. My chances of being a match and going through with this are slim. So um, I went ahead and I, I did the testing. Um, like I said, Phyllis and I see each other one time a year and that is at a real estate convention. And sure enough, that is when I got the call from the Cleveland clinic and they said, you are a match. So, wow. Yeah. Um, Phyllis and I were both vendors and our booths were side by or face to face. So I was seeing a lot of her and I had to go over and tell her right away, you know, hey, I'm a match. So that was. Wow. That was did, pretty did, she, did she break down at that point or? Well, we knew we had a long road ahead of us. Okay. Um, she didn't say, oh, crap or anything like that. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> it was, you know, I, I'm like, was feeling overwhelmed and I just really needed time to process it because I wasn't expecting it. And she was very, very patient with me. Gotcha. Now is the testing, is it just a blood test? Is that? Well, initially it is a blood test. Okay. And then in order, you know, once you decide to be a donor, then it's a two day complete test at the Cleveland clinic all day. Um, I mean, you get the works because they want to make sure that you are healthy enough to survive with only one kidney. So okay. you have CAT scans and GR, GFRs or GREs or EIEIO tests. I don't even know what right. they were. There were so many of them. Um, and you're just there and, you know, giving blood, meeting with dietitians, um, meeting with dermatologists, just everything that you can possibly think of you are screened for. Okay. Wow. So, I mean, it is a long road. I, mean, I would assume, I assume they have to kind of double check that at, somewhere along the way as well. I mean, it's right. They're not doing the tests and then it's the operations the next day. Well, I, I know that, but I guess for our listeners, it's. 
Yeah, so after I do the test, then it has to go before a committee. And in my case, my blood pressure was a little bit on the high side. So I had to wear a um, 24-hour blood pressure monitor. Oh, wow. And so then they had to review the results of that. Um, so they only do, they only meet on Fridays. So we had to wait until Friday. And then we had to wait to hear from my coordinator to see what the committee had decided. Um, all through this, Phyllis and I have learned patience. And it's not an easy lesson. <laughs> so, yeah, we, we didn't get our call until Friday at about 4.50. Okay. Now, I guess this officially wasn't part of a daisy chain then of multiple donors. Or do you, do you are you allowed to put a family member in line or something like that? Is How does that all work? Yeah, originally, I was going to be just simply donating to Mike. I knew nothing about, you know, the daisy chains or the swaps or anything like that. I didn't even know that was an option. So I originally was going to donate to Mike. But when I was meeting with my surgeon, he's the one that first um, brought it up to me and asked me, hey, if you are able or willing to help other people, you know, and I was thinking, well, sure, you know, tell me more. So he got the permission from me to put us into a swap. Okay. So how did that work then? Originally, we were scheduled, um, all my testing was done in January, the first part of January, and then surgery was scheduled for March. Um, we went Mar in, March of 2020, just right, for somebody right. listening to this a year from now. Uh, <laughs> yes, 2020. So yeah. Um, yeah, it was scheduled for March. We went up and we did our pre-admission testing, which you have to do two weeks prior to surgery. So we did that. Everything was great. The next week we got the call, everything has been on hold due to COVID. So yeah. surgery was postponed. Um, and then Phyllis and I had to learn more patience. So right. we waited, um, finally got the call, um, and surgery was scheduled for May 20th. In the meantime, another couple had been identified. It was a mother-daughter-in-law. And the daughter-in-law wanted to donate to her mother-in-law, but they were not compatible. However, with my blood type, I could donate to the mother-in-law, and then the daughter-in-law could donate to my friend Mike. Oh, wow. Okay. Okay. So, so it's not, yeah. not really a – well, I guess I don't know. I mean, it's I mean, it's sort of a daisy chain, I guess. I mean, it's, it's – I, I guess, Mike, trying to get my head wrapped around it, you said you were O, right, and Mike was A? Right. Okay. Yes. Um, and so the mother – I don't know. I'm not a doctor. You're not a doctor. <laughs> um, Leave it to the experts. Yeah, I, I, apparently they know what they're doing. Um, I guess my fear would be that, I mean, you have to, you know, you can donate to Mike, right? That's mm -hmm. kind of the, that's kind of the bird in the hand, right? Yeah. Um, and you kind of opted for going for doing the bush, so to speak. <laughs> right. Um, I mean, were these things happening happening simultaneously? So it's Mike had his surgery on May nineteenth, and then I had my surgery on May twentieth. Okay, all right, all right. So if somebody had backed out, you could say, "Well, wait a minute, all bets are off. I'm <laughs> donating to Mike." That's that was the that was the purpose yeah. of this. Yeah, Mike actually got his his kidney a day early. Okay. Um. Now, I I guess. I don't want to get too much into it, but was Mike's health pretty bad or it was just, it was just kind of, Hey, you're going to need something at some point or. Yeah. Mike actually was already on dialysis. So okay. his life consisted of dialysis on Monday, recovery on Tuesday, completely wiped out. Then Wednesday back to dialysis Thursday, you know, resting completely wiped. Friday dialysis Saturday you know, trying to recoup from it. Sunday would be his only day when he had any energy. And then of course he would try to get everything done on Sunday and wear himself out and then, you know, start with dialysis on Monday. Oh, so wow. yeah, his whole life was, you know, complete, you know, either dialysis or trying to recover from it and the fatigue involved with that. So really there was not a lot of quality of life there. Wow. Yeah, it would be. That would be tough. That, that yeah. would be really tough. Especially for a guy who's used to being active and doing things and has all of his life. Um, right. Yeah. Wow. Um, so where do you go from here? Obviously, you only have one kidney. You can't do this again. But I mean, I, I would imagine people are interested, at least 
I'm interested. So, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, it was a great experience. And one thing that a lot of the kidney donors that I've talked to, we all agree on is the only downfall is that you can only do it one time. Right. It was just such an amazing experience. Um, we were at the Cleveland Clinic. The care we received was phenomenal. Um, the nurses, the doctors, I was put up in a great room, um, a private room. Just everyone really took care of you. Interesting. I was reading an article about, well, it was the, I think I sent you a podcast. There was a kind of a club of people who were donors and people sitting around the table who were donors with their spouses were saying, Hey, you know, you can donate this. You can donate a part of your liver or right, things like right. that. Yeah. Um, yeah. And they're all, they're all kind of up one upping one another. Oh, really? Spouses are like, wait a minute here. <laughs> We've been through enough. Wait a minute. Um, right, right. I think sometimes it's harder on the family. Now, have you become an advocate for this? I mean, beyond just, hey, I've done it. I've done my deed. Um, I would like to be an advocate for it. I, I haven't said a lot. I'm you know, still kind of fresh. Um, but yeah, I definitely want to be an advocate. In fact, yesterday I just told somebody who was thinking about it, you know, talk to me, have your friend talk to me. I would love to, to share with them my experience and what I went through. And, um, you know, it was, it was really positive. Met some great people. When I was in Cleveland for two days doing my testing, there was another lady that kept going to the same appointments I was at. We struck up a conversation, found out that she was there for the same exact reason. We didn't live that far apart. So we've become friends and she just donated last month. Oh, wow. Yeah, so it's been been neat to be able to kind of mentor her and let her know what I went through and what to expect and what to take to the hospital, what not to take, all those little right little pieces of wisdom that helps. Okay, wow, it's it's fascinating. I mean, when when I first learned this in February, um, it was January, February, when I first learned what you were doing, I was to be honest, I was floored. Uh, I like to think I'm generous. I try to be generous and. Anything I've ever done just pales in comparison to this. Um, it, I find that hard to believe. Yeah. I'm, For I'll, me, it was just taking a couple of weeks out of my life. Um, right. You know, to give somebody else back their complete life. You know, I look at, like for Mike, Mike and Phyllis, they have a daughter who does foster care. Um, you know, she is with kids and, you know, day in, day out. And, you know, for months, for years, and she's getting ready to adopt one of her foster kids right now. I mean, that, that is a hero to me. I mean, I could not do something like that. Um, you know, this was just a couple of weeks, you know, a surgery, not a big deal to me. Um, you well, know. I guess, go ahead. I I, I say, guess it, yeah. <laughs> I'll shut up. <laughs> um, but yeah, people like that, those are the heroes. But I think we're all given something in life that's right. different, um, you know, and this just happened to be something that was placed on my heart to do, um, you know, to help out your fellow man. I guess the question I have is, and I know there were some fundraisers, but medical expenses, yes. I mean, are, are yours covered? Um, my, my medical expenses are covered under Mike's health insurance. Okay. But we have been doing fundraisers because they obviously have the, the deductibles, the co-insurance. Um, after surgery, Mike had so many follow-up visits that they actually got an Airbnb right there in Cleveland and stayed there for a month. Um, just because they needed to be close to the hospital. So they've had that expense as well. Okay. Yeah, I mean, those are just the things you don't think about. And um, I guess in reality, as you've said, you didn't give your kidney to Mike, and I just was realizing that before we hit record. Um, and you didn't know the people that you had given a kidney to. Right, right. I just found out a little bit of information about them yesterday. So. Yeah, it's, uh, it's amazing. I mean, it's totally a stranger, you know, right. totally. Yeah, I really don't know anything about this person. I hope it's not a sworn enemy out there somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> Someone from the opposite political party, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah there you go. Yeah, so, yeah I uh, have no idea. Someone who puts pineapple on their pizza. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, yeah. there you go. Right. <laughs> there you go. Well, I appreciate you being on today. This was very insightful. Um, I'm, I'm sure... Uh, I'm sure people listening, I hope they find it insightful. I mean, I, I think on this program, we talk about generosity a lot and giving to other people. And this is just one of those, you know, people think about giving, think about giving a referral or holding a door open. Uh, this is a big deal in, in my book. So yeah. 
Thank you. So, Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas, Frank. Thanks for joining us on the Networking Rx podcast. Please put what you've learned into action today and let us know if you have questions, comments, or ideas for future topics. You can email them to us at podcast at amspirit.com. That's A-M-S-P-I-R-I-T dot com. Finally, so you never miss an episode, be sure to subscribe to the Networking Rx podcast through iTunes, Overcast, or however you receive your podcasts. Now get out and network with someone. The Networking Rx podcast is the copyright production of Amspirit Business Connection. All rights reserved.